Welcome to Crash Magic. In this video we're going to take a look at a card trick called A Card Is Found. Now this trick was devised by Di Vernon so you know it's going to be a good one. I'll start by showing you a performance of the trick and then I'll go through how you can learn this great effect using any borrowed shuffle deck of cards. We're going to attempt a magic trick where we follow the clues to find a card. But to begin if you could take the cards and shuffle them as much as you like and in any way that you like. And once you're quite happy I'll show you that you've done a great job of mixing the cards. Now I'm going to take a small packet of cards for myself and place those cards just to the side here and if you could choose and take a card from anywhere in this spread and then if you could take a look at the card that you've chosen remember it and then place it here and then we'll lose it somewhere in the middle of these cards now if you remember we are going to follow clues three clues to find your card if you could cut about two-thirds of the pack and hand that to me and the cards that are left are going to be our first clue to find in your card so if we look at our first clue we have an eight so we deal one two three four five six seven eight and this gives us our second clue a ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this gives us our final clue. An ace. Which of course is one. So three clues have led us to this card, your card, the three of diamonds. So that was the performance of Di Vernon's A Card Is Found. It's totally impromptu, so you can have a spectator shuffle the cards. And once they've done this, you just need to glimpse the top and bottom cards. You're not interested in the suits, just the values. So in this case we've got a 9 and an ace, or a 1, which makes 10. You can easily glimpse these cards by spreading the cards face up, to show the spectator what a great job they did at shuffling. You then need to silently count off that value in cards. So you want it to look as if you're just taking a small packet of a random number of cards. And you can make this seem a bit more random by pushing off the cards three or four cards at a time. Once you've done this, you then invite your spectator to select a card from the remaining deck and you can do this in any way you like. The only important thing is that once they've selected their card, you retain the order of the rest of the pack because we need that bottom card to remain in place. The spectator can then look at and remember their card, the Ace of Hearts, and then you have this card placed on top of the pack. And after that, you drop the small packet of cards, in this case 10, on top. Now, at this point, you could, if you like, do some sort of false shuffle, false cuts, but you don't necessarily have to. And then you ask your spectator to cut two thirds or maybe three quarters off the top of the pack and to give it to you. And then we take the cards that are left as our first clue. So if we look, we have an ace, which is one. And of course, this is the ace that's been at the bottom of the pack all along. So we deal one in this case. We then turn this pile over to reveal our second clue. And of course, how many cards we have dealt when we turn the pile, this will always be the top card from the start, so the, the nine that was at the top. So we deal nine cards now. And once we've done that, we turn this pile over for our last clue. So here we have a seven, but in actual fact, the number's really irrelevant of this last pile because at this stage, the top card will now be the selected card. So we'll deal seven. 
and then when we turn over this pile we can reveal that the card chosen by the spectator is this card, the Ace of Hearts. Well that's the end of the video. If you liked it please like it and subscribe. If you've got any comments leave them down below and see you soon.